to have a, a, a ton of artists outside. We're going to be giving away candy. We're going to be blasting a ton of Jesus music. Amen. Because some people in our community don't know we're here, but we're going to have lights up. We're going to have smoke up. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. So when the, those kids are trick-or-treating, they're going to be like, Mom, we need to go over there. Yes, you do. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible says soul winner has to be wise. So we're going to just throw that bait out there and we're going to hook some in. Amen. 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 So somebody told me it was Pastor Appreciation Month. Anybody heard that? Yeah. Amen. So I, w I want to thank God for our pastors, Mary Jo and Pastor Eric, uh, Pastor Don, Pastor Adam, Pastor Kevin. And one great thing, I, I just want to thank God for Pastor Eric and Mary Jo because on this Pastor Appreciation Month, they are on vacation right now. Thank God they're on vacation because they need rest. They need God to rejuvenate them, and they want to make the staff jealous because they're, they're in Cuba. <laughs> Only thing I know, you better bring me back some coffee, Pastor Eric. That's all I want. So just bring me some. I'm not going to drink it. I just want to have it. They'll be like, that's from Cuba. You know. So we thank God for them, and thank God that we just pray that God just bless them where they are because, you know, God, the Bible says that God give us shepherds after his own heart. So they are an extension of God's love. Amen. So let's just give it up for them for a moment. Amen. All right. Anybody ready for the word of God today? I know I am. I've been pumped. I haven't been getting sleep. God has been talking to me. I'm asleep. I'm like, Lord, leave me alone. Just, well, don't leave me alone. But Lord, I want some sleep, but he's like, my people are more important than your sleep. I said, yes, you're right. Let's go. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for this moment in time that we have to share together this word of God. Lord, I just decrease as you increase. Lord, I pray right now that your people see you, none of me, speak through my mouth, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind, 
all of you, none of me, every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is good ground to receive the incorruptible word of God. Lord, let the words of the Bible leap off the pages this morning. Let this gospel permeate our heart in the name of Jesus, God, and we just give you the praise and the honor. Holy Spirit, have your way. Satan, you have no place, no light, no authority in this service. We come against every distraction. We come against every demonic force that was tried to bind and bound the people of God. We speak freedom over them now. Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. God, I don't know what your people need. You know you're their God. They're your people. God, I just pray that you feed them through the word this morning in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. We've been in this epic series. Amen. I don't know about you. I've been enjoying going through this Bible. And if this is your first time, my name is Brinson, and I'm, I'm the youth pastor here. It's my pleasure to serve. And this epic series, we've been going through the whole Bible. So I challenged myself the other day. I said, okay, you got two minutes to catch people up. So let's see if I can do it. So in the beginning, God said, let there be light. It happened. Six days happened. He created man. He reached in the dirt, pulled up some clay, breathed in it. The guy started coughing. <coughs> he woke up. Adam came. He was alone. He said, I need, I need some help. I see the squirrels got somebody. The deer's got somebody. I said, God, I need somebody. God said, okay. I'm, he put him to sleep. Bam. Pulled one of his ribs. I gave him a woman. He seen that lady. He was like, whoa. Whoa. Man. They got together. He showed her everything. He said, we can do it all. We can, we can do everything. Everything is legal in this place. Hey, come on, somebody. It's legal. Then he said, but we can't. Eat from this tree. We got everything. Serpent comes. The demonic one, the, the devil. He tricks her. They both fall. Sin enters the world. Death enters the world. Corruption enters the world. Raci racism enters the world. Murder enters the world. God has a plan as soon as it happens. He said, I'm, I'm not going to leave my creation who I love behind behind. So then he looks for a person that he can he can fulfill his love and he found this dude named Abraham. Abraham was crazy about the Lord. He said, he said, Abraham, you love me so much, go kill your son that you've been waiting a hundred years for. So he, Abraham was so crazy. He, he took him. He said, I love you, God. And right before he stabbed him, the angel said, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Okay. So he didn't kill his son. God took note. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to outdo you, Abraham. You just wait. You just wait. I, you don't got to kill your son, but I'm going to outdo you. But then he made Abraham a promise. He said, I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless your people. His people happened to be the children of Israel. Then he was looking for another person to, to send his love because his children got into slavery. He found this dude named Moses. He appeared to him in a burning bush. He spoke to Moses, burning bush, fire. He, 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 he set a bush on fire and he spoke to Moses. He told Moses, go get his people out of Egypt. He, he went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said no. He said, okay, watch what's going to happen. Plagues came. Then all these miracles happened. He took all these people, a million people out of, out of Egypt. God split the Red Sea. He did these miracles. They was in the wilderness, and then God showed up again with this fire in the wilderness. They had a cloud by day, fire by night, the first AC unit, the first portable heater. It was there. And then after that, they, they grew. They went into the promised land. But then the, the, the Old Testament story was God will save his people. His people will celebrate. They fall back into sin. The enemies overtake them. And God bring them back out. This happened over and over. Then he would use his spirit and get on certain judges and prophets like, like Samuel, the spirit of God to come over here and be super strong. I personally believe Samson was around my, 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 you know, he, he was, <laughs> it wouldn't be amazing if he, if he went, I don't believe he was a big stocky dude. I think he, you know, had a little, had some puny arms, but when the spirit of, I ain't saying my arms puny, I'm saying Sam, 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 not Sam, Samson, so 
somebody help me. Y'all got me up here preaching, and you're like, uh, uh, Pastor, that's not the right guy. Uh, Samson was super strong, and I think he was my size. But then he would speak through other prophets, and, and things would happen like Prophet uh, uh, Elijah would call down fire. Fire, sit there again, Moses. Cloud, but that fire by night, he called down fire. All this stuff happened, but then it went silent at the end of the Old Testament. God didn't speak to anybody for hundreds of years. Then Jesus steps on the scene, born of a virgin, gangster, born of a virgin, gangster. He would walk up in, in, the, in, the, in the synagogue and he would just do miracles, do stuff they didn't never see before, like a dude with a, with a baby hand. Grown man, baby hand. And he'll say, be healed. Then it's, it'll come out. Then somebody, somebody daughter will be dead. He'll like, get up. People will be, have, have issues of blood. They wouldn't have it if they touched some of his clothes. Jesus was the man. He had the first drive through with fish sandwiches. <laughs> Captain D stole and his idea from Jesus. He said, I got, I got five loaves of bread and I got two fish. He said, this drive through about to be amazing. He fed all these people. Then the insurance companies and the Pharisees got jealous of Jesus. I, I believe insurance companies had something to do with this. Now, think about this. Jesus healing all these people. Why do you need insurance? They're like, hey, y'all better kill him. The aft like duck was like, ah, ah. <laughs> so they killed Jesus. The disciples scattered. They were scared. The third day came. Jesus came back to life. He was dead. And he was like, I'm too gangster to stay dead. I'm a gangster. He said, let me get up. He got up. He showed himself to the disciples. He showed himself. He, he preached the kingdom of God. But then they remembered in the Old Testament, God made a promise. He said, I'm, I'm, I got this promise for you. And Jesus said, I got to go back to heaven so this promise can be fulfilled. He went, he, he, I told the, everybody in the youth group, Jesus was the first helium balloon. He just floated back up in the sky. And I, just like some of you guys, I was getting looks like, helium balloon, really? Yes. What else do you know that can just keep floating up and up and up and up? Jesus did. Day of Pentecost come. Guys was gathered around. Everybody came back to Israel. For this, for this one moment, God did it again. He went from the burning bush, fire, cloud by day, fire by night. His representation of his spirit, boom, came. Elijah called down fire, God's representation, I am the true God, boom. Day of Pentecost come, these guys have flames of fire over their head. They're speaking in heavenly languages. The Holy Spirit fills these people. They get boldness. They go out and like, oh my goodness. I feel so powerful. The spirit of the living God is on me. So they all break out. They're like, hey, wherever you go, go, to, go, go over here. You go over there. Okay, one, two, three, break. <laughs> so now... When we talk about the Holy Spirit in church, some people think it's spooky. They're like, oh my God, not that, not, oh no. Somebody's gonna run around the church, oh my God. <laughs> Somebody, I don't wanna see anybody fainting in church, oh my God. Not talk about the Holy Spirit. No, 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 let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is the thing that we all need to complete this, this born-again experience. Luke 7 says this, Acts, and it will be given to you. Oh, oh, I see y'all in the back. Okay, it wasn't there before, it just happened. And it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, 
and it will be open to you. For everyone who acts receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his son acts for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he acts for a fish, will give him a serpent? If then, you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? The Holy Spirit is the best gift that has ever been given. Jesus save us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. And we got to know that The Holy Spirit is the representation of God. How many, how many of you know that nothing in heaven is broken? Nothing in heaven is broken. Why am I telling you this? Because when the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus prayed a prayer in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer. He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How can the kingdom come without the Spirit of God come? When we're praying the kingdom, we're praying that the Holy Spirit comes into us and that God's kingdom comes. When we read about the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, that's the kingdom of God coming on earth. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God coming on earth. We need the Holy Spirit because, we, because the Holy Spirit empowers the unbrokenness of heaven coming down to the earth. The reason that Jesus could come and do miracles because nobody in heaven, nothing in heaven needed to be healed. All the healing is there. So we got to translate the healing power of God down to the people of earth and if you have the Holy Spirit just like these brothers in Acts just like these brothers who had that flame above their head you have the same flame you just can't see it because only thing you got to do is tap into the spirit God will let you know the same thing that they got I give it to you too he said if you be evil and you know how to give good gifts how much more will I give to you Jesus died for you he rose for you. He went up for you to bring his power down for you. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit for a second. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to do what's right. When Jesus was on earth, he didn't give us an excuse to keep sinning. I know a lot of people like, I'm under grace. I'm covered in the blood if I mess up. I think, it, I think it has to be a point that you love God enough that you like, you know, you, 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 ever, you ever had that one friend, that one friend, that one, that one one, who always mess around on his girl. And you're like, dude, what is wrong with you? She is the bomb. She look good. She ain't let herself go. She, she take care of the kids. She take care of your raggedy self. <laughs> and then one day, the light click on. He's like, man, I, I love her so much, I got to stop doing her wrong. It got to be a point that we love God so much. Our heart break when we do him wrong. And Jesus, when he came, he didn't give us an excuse to sin. He raised the bar. He was like, look, <laughs> fornication? Oh, Check this out. You look at a girl wrong. You committed adultery in your heart. Oh, my God. <laughs> he raised the bar. Why did he raise the bar? Because he knew that when he ascended into heaven and brought down that Holy Spirit, he gave you the power of heaven, the unbrokenness of heaven for you to do right. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness to be a witness. When those brothers was in the day of Pentecost and when they got the Holy Spirit and started talking in Japanese and in Hebrew and in Arabic and somebody was speaking Ebonics, <laughs> they said different tongues. You know somebody was in there talking about sandwiches and, sh and scrimp and scrawls. Sh <laughs> Y'all better get out them streets. 
Somebody was speaking Ebonics in the day of Pentecost. All the languages was there. They had the boldness to know that the power of God was in them, and they had to tell somebody about Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives you a boldness. The Holy Spirit gives us a heavenly language. And I know some people don't agree with that, but if, if the boys in Pentecost had it, I can get it too. Through God's Spirit, people can be healed. In the scriptures before, in Acts, it said Peter's shadow healed people. That's insanity to me. I don't know about you. That's like, I read, I read a lot of comic books, if you ain't know. I haven't seen one person in a comic book shadow do, do the things that Peter's shadow can do. You have to be so full of the Holy Spirit. You have to be so full of God that your shadow, think about this, everything attached to you can be a blessing to somebody else. Every, if you're a note taker, that was good. Somebody send that to me later. Everything <laughs> attached to you can be a blessing from God if God's Spirit is on you. Let your kingdom come. Now I can get the ax. Glory to God. Acts 10. Anybody brought a regular Bible? I just want to see. In the, in the, let's let, raise it up. Let me see. Hey, y'all, all right, okay. Digital Bibles, let's go. Dig, hey, digital Bibles, hey. If you got the Bible in your heart, just thank you, Jesus. There we go. Acts 10, 1. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort. Oh, he was in a gang. All right. A devout man who feared God with all his household gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God about the ninth hour, that's about 3 p.m., of the day he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come and say to him, Cornelius, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror. Yeah, me too me three and said what is it Lord and he said to him your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God I just want to pause right there when you give this is not a tithing message but I just want to point this out because this is this stuff affects the heart of God when we give this stuff for, for, for Thanksgiving, when you give in the offering, when you, when, you, when, you don't, when you give when you don't want to, you know, the people on the side of the street, you're like, oh, my God, they're going to use it for drugs. That's between them and the Lord. You do what God's telling you to do. Be because when you do right, the Bible says when you do it to the least of them, you do it unto the Lord. That's why our compassion and our empathy mean so much to God. So this dude, Cornelius, he's not a Jew. He's a Gentile. He's somebody by Jewish customs and back then was not supposed to receive the promises of the Lord. But Jesus, after he died, he ripped the veil and the game is about to change. And the angel said to him, and now send men to Joppa. I don't know if, it's, if that's in Jamaica or not, but Joppa. And bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner. He needed a tan, okay? Whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier to somebody else in the mob from among those who attended him and having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. I just want to point out something else. When the spirit came, he was specific. He was specific on the purpose. When you pray and ask God for the Holy Spirit, you can ask God to be specific. Some of us like God I hear Pastor Eric say you should serve somewhere and, you know, I don't want to go to nobody's house. That's a little weird to me. What should I do? God, would you be specific with me? When you're looking and searching 
for the will of God in your life. If you ask God to be specific with you, he will be specific with you. Guess what, singles? God will be specific with you. God, is that the one? No. And sometimes we don't listen the first time. And then you'll get that text from your friend like, I don't know, I was just in prayer and God just told me to send you this text, say red flag, red flag, run. <laughs> Are you sure that was the Lord? Then another text come. Hey, uh, run. <laughs> the Lord will be specific. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter, you know, the guy with the knife, he cut ears, ear soup, went up on the house top about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a, okay, whoa, 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 I need a whole church. He fell into a, so when you have the Holy Spirit, there is a possibility you might fall into a, we're not talking about the music call. When you have the Holy Spirit, Peter was in a. One day you might be in a. But if that's not where you are with your faith, the Lord not going to do nothing to scare you unless he sends you an angel. <laughs> he fell into a trance and saw the heavens open and something like a great sheep descended. Jesus always doing stuff first, right? He had the first drive through Then he had the first picnic. <laughs> A picnic basket. <laughs> Being, Yogi Bear fans are here. Being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it was all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him. Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, like, who are you talking to? I mean, that's not what he said. Wait, <laughs> what God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at heaven, at once to heaven. That thing showed me something. It showed me something. God can be giving us instructions and we'll let our religion and we'll let our routine detour us from following the will of God. We will let the things that we've seen in the old Baptist church, you know, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I have nothing against the Baptist church. I love the Baptist church. The Baptist church has done great in the earth. But there are, they do have rules. They do have regulations. Listen, I went in some churches, some people, they didn't know who I was. They was like, listen, I know you're a sinner. You need to take that hat off. You know I'm a sinner. <laughs> I take it off. So when I showed them the glory, right? <laughs> and then, and then the guy was like, oh, we got our next speaker. Come up here. And then I just walked up there and looked at him like, Thank God for saving the sinner. Amen. <laughs> we will let religion, we will let our routine, we will let the things that we're not comfortable with make us miss God. It says when God makes something clean, who are we to say anything else? Amen. Amen. I knew, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what. Amen, amen, amen. 
I'm talking to the people who, who, who have addictions right now. I'm talking to the people who used to have addictions right now. I'm talking about any type of addiction. I'm, I, it don't have to be drugs. It can be an addiction to caffeine. It can be an addiction to, to fornication. It can be addiction to anything. If God didn't clean you up, you look in that mirror and you say who you are that God made you. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am what the Lord has made clean. If God has cleaned you, you don't let anybody else pull you back down. God saved me from hell and I'm not going. Amen. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to cry it out. I am forgiven, Jesus. And if you know somebody who God made clean, I don't care how many times they messed up. You don't call them anything else. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. They might need the power of your tongue to make them rise up. Amen. God said, what I have clean, don't you call common. Don't you call unclean. God gave us three things when he saved us. He gave us a new spirit. He gave you a new heart. And he gave you a renewed mind. You don't have the same heart. You don't have the same mind anymore. Our compassion with the Holy Spirit should be different. Peter said, my customs don't allow me to eat that gator tail. Lord, help him. <laughs> Shrimp is not kosher. I'm not supposed to eat this. God gave him the biggest crab boil ever. He had that, that king crab on that picnic. He had that Alaskan crab. He had that lobster with the butter that you dip in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He had that pulled pork barbecue on there. He had the whole 4th of July. He had Thanksgiving in front of Peter. And Peter was like, I'm not eating. And Jesus was like, you crazy because this crab is banging. Look at this. Um, um, um. You. I died for this Listen, I went up to heaven so you can get my spirit. And not only this spirit, you don't even know how good Gator tell if somebody did it right. I believe that G Jesus sent him the first crowd boil. It said reptiles. Listen, I, I can't think of no other reptile that you can eat besides Gator tail. I can't think of nothing else. I mean, if you know, then God bless you. But... It said reptile, it said bird, and Jesus said kill and eat. He wasn't used to, he was like, wait a minute, Lord, hold up. I have never done anything outside of my custom. Jesus was changing the game. He sent Cornelius, he, he sent those, Cornelius sent those men. Peter went to Cornelius' house who was a Gentile, and it was unlawful for him to go into this man's house. But praise God, he was obedient to the voice of God and not to the customs of man. He went into Cornelius' house. Cornelius said, told him, I love God. I obey the words of God. Matter of fact, let's read it. We're going to drop down to verse 34. Cornelius told him, he was like, look, bro, I, I got approached by this angel, this dude who was wearing like this white linen suit, and he had these shoes on I ain't never seen. They had something on them named uh, Dolce something. I couldn't pronounce the rest of it, but they were all white. It was Dolce, and he had something that said Hugo Boss on his belt. I couldn't understand what this angel had on, and he told me to send people to get you here to come eat with us. And Peter had an epiphany. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout Judea 
beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, with the Holy Spirit and with power, with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good. When you have the Holy Spirit and power, we should all go doing good in healing all in the name of Jesus. You don't necessarily have to lay hands on somebody to heal them. Do you believe that the Spirit of God can be on you so strong that you can send a text message and when the person reads it, the Spirit of God touched their heart, the Spirit of God bring them out of a dark place like he did us. When the Spirit of God is on you, when the Holy Spirit is on you, he give you boldness to heal people. He give you a heart of empathy to say, I want you not broken. I want the unbrokenness of heaven to reign on you. And as Peter spoke these words, it said every person who heard the message of the cross, the Holy Spirit came upon them. How awesome was that day? People who wasn't supposed to receive the goodness of God received the Holy Spirit that day. Hallelujah. Woo. Can you imagine the people who you love, who you know who is not right? The, the gospel is not complicated. He just told them that Jesus was born of a virgin. The Holy Spirit was with him. He did good, he healed. He died and he rose on the third day. And when they heard the good news, the Holy Spirit fell. They received that word. The Holy Spirit is in you. And if you don't have it, today is your day. Because I challenge you today, just like in Luke 7, it said, if you want this good gift, only thing you got to do is ask for this gift. It's the best thing you'll receive. You'll be empowered to do what's right. You'll be empowered to have boldness. You'll be able to obey God. It gets easy to obey God when you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will be that small step voice like, uh-uh, don't do that. Ooh, ooh. Don't call her. Don't text that. Don't do it. Stay out them people DMs. Let's rise to our feet. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. We're going to have some people walking up front now that if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord, and while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, they're going to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And if you've never received the Holy Spirit and, you've, and you're saved and you're like, God, I want more. I know it's more to this. I want that thing that Peter got. I want that thing that Cornelius got. I want that thing that, that the guys at Pentecost have. I want it today. If that's you and if and if you feel like you, you've, you're in a backslidden state, I don't want you to walk out of here being the same person. We want you whole. I want the unbrokenness of heaven to, to, to reign in your life today. And if that's you and if I, I gave you three things, and if you're one of them, I just want you to come up. I want to pray with you. I want somebody up here to pray with you. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, if you feel like you need to get close to God and you and you, you there's a drift, there's a there's a, a a small gulf, I just want you to come now. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this word. God, we just pray that this week the Holy Spirit leads and guides us. God, we pray for the, the Thanksgiving pack out. We pray for our pastors. We pray for Blocktober, that it's all is a success and that the chili cook-off is a success. God, and we, I pray over your sheep today that you bless them, you be with them, you be with their families, you keep them in health, you keep them whole, God. Lord, you strengthen their relationships and get, and Lord, I just pray that the unbrokenness of heaven will reign in their life. And God, we thank you for Journey Church 
that we have a place that we can call a church home that you can speak to us. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for coming to church.